Hey guys, glad you stopped back by. If you caught yesterday's video with the uh, uh, cheesy hash browns and meatball slow cooker recipe, which if you did, go check it out. You're not gonna be disappointed. It's quite the delicious dish, easy to make. You can go on about your day for a few hours. And then the other thing you have to do is take the lid off, put it at the table. It's ready to go. So good. Um, but I had mentioned that we were going to do a, a peach crisp, uh, very similar to a cobbler. The only difference between a cobbler and a crisp is a uh, crisp is more um, oat based, you know, where it, cobblers are more cake like on the top. Um, a crisp has got more like a crumble and usually has uh, oats in it, which are awesome. Um, and I think this is going to be awesome. Quick, easy, no nonsense, and it gives you a variety of pans that you can use. Uh, even in the original recipe I found, it was, you know, use a couple of 8x8s, use a 9x13, use a 10 inch ca uh, cast iron, use a deep dish 9 inch pie pan. Um, it really was, uh, what sold me on the recipe, and I'll tell you who it was right here because I'm horrible at remembering things. Um, but that way you know who where I got the recipe from because it, it really was and it's for somebody I've used before um, you know, Whose recipes I've, I've looked at before but uh, anyhow Quick easy simple no fuss no muss um, I am going to do mine in a 10 inch cast iron pan um, But like I said, you could just as easily do this in a 9 by 13 or two 8 by 8 or a 9 inch deep uh, pie pan uh, yeah, all that, yeah. So, if you're new and this is your first video, welcome. Glad you stopped by. Hope you get something out of this video. Maybe check out some of my other videos. We're rapidly getting near uh, 500 videos, which is crazy. Um, and, and so I've been doing this for a minute now, and I didn't think that was going to happen. I didn't think I would have. We finally passed 3,600 subscribers, so the momentum is still going. Um, maybe we can hit, actually hit that goal of 5,000 by the end of the year. That would be awesome. One of the ways we can do that is if you uh, like, subscribe, and share, comment, all that stuff puts us out in the algorithm and uh, keeps our neighborhood relevant, right? You know, so that way we can get more people in here to talk about uh, good food. Maybe not always the healthiest food, but good food. Um, and, and hanging out, having a good time, communicating. Uh, if you're returning or, you know, one of our new subscribers, speaking of which, welcome back and thank you. I appreciate that comments comments are important and they're always welcome the only thing i ask is you be nice uh type before you think you don't have to agree with me or anybody else in the comments for that matter um all i ask is you be nice when you uh comment back um think before you type you know that being said um i will give you all your measurements in uh cups tablespoons teaspoons i will also give them to you in grams and milliliters that way everybody no matter where you're at can play along so why don't we head on down here to the counter and we're gonna go ahead and get started making this. Hold on for me just one second. All right, we are down here at the counter. So, right off the rip, the only thing you're pretty much gonna need is a couple bowls and whatever apparatus it is you're gonna to use to uh, put your uh, peach crisp in. I am using, like I said, I'm using a cast iron um, and it's basically a pie pan, but it's a 10 inch pie pan and it's deep. Um, so I know it'll work. Um, and then, no matter what you're using, you want to go ahead and butter it up. You know, put some butter on it or a veggie spray if you so desire. I don't put veggie spray on my cast iron, but I did butter it. You know, even though it shouldn't stick, well, I take that chance. Next thing I did was I went ahead and turned my oven on 350 degrees Fahrenheit. And it's like 180 degrees Celsius. So, in my first medium, or my first large bowl, I have a large bowl, I have got some peaches. I've got six large peaches. Uh, sliced up and they're about a quarter inch quarter to half a uh, quarter to eighth and eighth to a quarter inch and it's five cups worth of peaches or 750 to 800 grams or about um, two and a half pounds I got like two and three quarter pounds in here and then to this I'm going to add an eighth of a teaspoon of salt all right just do it if you don't have an eighth of a teaspoon, it's okay. Uh, just put in a, a light pinch, a, scat, a scant pinch of salt. And then we can add to this, um, we, I got some flour. I've got a quarter cup, um, 
31 grams worth of just regular old all-purpose flour. We're going to go ahead and put that over top of it. Yeah. And then I've got a half a cup, 100 grams of regular granulated sugar. We're going to put that on there. And then we are going to put, um, it's three teaspoons or one tablespoon worth of lemon juice. Get that on there. And then I've got a half a teaspoon, yeah, half a teaspoon, two grams of uh, baker's vanilla, baking vanilla, or just regular pure vanilla extract. And then we are going to go ahead and get this mixed up. So I will grab this. And we just want to get this all coated with the, uh, get your peaches coated. All right, we got our peaches nice and coated, just like such. So we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna dump these into our pie pan there. Just like that, we'll leave that sit there. I know those look incredibly unhealthy, um, which is okay because I don't really do healthy very well when it comes to most desserts and um, some cooking, but not much. Um, it just kind of works out that way. So. The next thing we got to do is make our crisp to go on top. As soon as I wash that off my hands real quick. So to make our crisp, we're going to go ahead and grab a medium sized bowl. And first things we're going to put in this is some brown sugar. I have got, um, yep, that's exactly what I've got. A half a cup, 110 grams. Now, if you're doing just a half a cup and not using grams, it's packed. Uh, so that means you want to press it down into your half a cup measuring cup. We're going to put that in there. And to that, I am going to add one teaspoon, two grams of cinnamon, and a half a teaspoon, um, two grams of salt. Or I'm sorry, a quarter teaspoon, one gram of salt. So two grams of cinnamon, one gram of salt. Go ahead and get that put in there. And then we are going to take a half a cup of flour. Is that correct? I'm sorry, two thirds cup of flour at 84 grams. We're gonna put that in there. And then we're just gonna grab a fork real quick and get that mixed up a little bit. Okay, we got this mixed up and combined. It doesn't have to be perfectly combined because we're not done adding stuff to this yet. So the next thing we're gonna to add to this is a half a cup, 114 grams of unsalted butter. Now, if all you have is salted butter, that's fine. You, you can, you're more than welcome to use it. Just leave the little bit of salt that we put in this out. Um, but what we're gonna do is I've got it cubed up and it's really cold. Um, if you cube it up and it, it feels like it's even the slightest bit warm and you don't, you're not gonna use it right away, just go ahead and put it back in the fridge. Um, 20 minutes to half hour but if you are going to use it rather quickly put it in your freezer for like five minutes I'm going to take a, a pastry cutter and I am going to turn this all into a crumb yeah so it'll be like little crumble like uh, yeah it'll be like, like a crumble all right so we got that done and right there is our end result so see how it's you know it's got a nice crumbled look to it you know, and that tool is called a pastry cutter because what it does is it cuts butter or shortening into your uh, pastries. You know, it, predominantly, like if you're making biscuits or pie crust, you could, you know, use it to make a flaky pie crust with butter. Um, or if you don't have either of those, you can just go ahead and use a fork and just sit there and smash it into it. Um, it'd be a little longer process, I would imagine, but it would still work just the same. Or, or you have a third option. Let's say you don't have a fork. Let's say you don't have a pastry cutter. You can just take it and squeeze it and rub it in your hand, fingers like this and mix it in with that brown sugar and flour real good. Those are some options uh, for you, but you're just turning it into a crumb to make a crisp with. So the next thing we want to do is take our crisp and we're just going to go ahead and sprinkle it on top of our peaches. All right, so we've got our 
crisp on top of our peaches, just like such. So we're gonna go ahead and get this put in the oven. And we're gonna put it on the middle rack. We're in the middle of the oven. And we're gonna set the timer for 45 to 50 minutes. I'm gonna go ahead and start at 45. Turn my light on. How many of you guys, when you bake or cook, do you turn the light on in your oven? Um, I know I do. Uh, anytime I use my oven, that way I can see it. Um, especially with, uh, if you're new, if you are new to my channel, almost everything I make on here, I've never made before. Um, especially with the baking stuff. Um, I mean, there's a handful of things here and there that I've probably, I might have made before making it with you guys, but for the most part, everything on my channel is made for the very first time right here with you guys. Um, but I like to keep an eye on things when my light's on. Do you guys leave your light on in the oven? when you're baking or cooking, um, let me know down in the comments. That would be kind of interesting to know. Uh, 45, 50 minutes. Um, we are looking for uh, the top, the crisp, to be a nice golden brown. And we should see the juices from the peaches bubbling in between the, in the gaps of the, of the crisp. So when I come back, we'll take a look at it and maybe even try some. All right, I'll see you here in just a second. Okay, so because I'm special, and I just realized it, um, even though they're in there, they're in the crisp, I didn't mention the oats at all. <laughs> Although they did get put in. Um, after you get done mixing in your butter, you want to go ahead and put in your oats. Um, and your oat amount is uh, blah, 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 two thirds of a cup or 57 grams worth of oats. Now. I'm using rolled oats or old-fashioned oats. You can also use quick oats. Um, the only one, and this holds true for most baking, that you want to um, steer clear of is what are called steel oats. And steel oats are, they're just like the other oats, only they're really thick. Um, quick oats are cut super thin. Rolled or old-fashioned oats are you know, a little thicker but they'll still soften in the time you use for baking, in the time you bake most things, where steel oats are really thick, and those are the kind you soak um, before you use them. So, I, I, but I did want to mention that because I'm about special. So now I'm gonna finish letting this bake. Um, when it comes out, I will be back, and uh, we'll take a look and uh, hopefully get to try some. All right, I'll see you here in a second. All right, so. Got her baked, and I feel absolutely horrible about uh, not mentioning the oats while we were doing this because that's just dumb of, on my part. But there we are, looking beautiful, I think. Yeah, hands down. Now, I pulled it out of the oven at 45 minutes, and it was bubbling around the edge, just like if you were baking a pie. Now, if you've never baked a fruit pie before, you look for, you know, you put vent holes in the top and you look for your uh, filling to be bubbling in those vent holes, you know, or if you can see through them. And that's how you know that your filling is hot enough that it will um, become firm and not just run out all over the place. And my top is good and crisp. Um, so we we're in good shape there. Now, after I pulled it out of the oven, I let it sit here for about five, 10 minutes. Uh, enough that I'm not going to kill myself on this and I'm not going to melt my face off when I when I uh, Try this that that's the important thing really you, you never want to take anything out of the oven and then uh, Eat on it right away because you will I mean pretty much just melt your face um, And that you don't want I mean, That's still pretty piping hot By every stretch of the imagination of piping hot and this looks so good um, thank you again, Colleen, for mentioning this. Um, she's one of the people here in our YouTube neighborhood. And I thought, you know, I, I've actually never made a peach crisp. I, I have a video for an apple crisp um, that I did last year, year before, that turned out phenomenal. You should check that video out. Um, apple season is right around the corner, so to speak. But there we are, right there. I don't know how well you can see that in the light. Uh, yeah. yeah. Yeah, yeah. Um, but there we are. So, give me one second. Let's adjust that camera and then we'll try some. Hold on for me. 
Okay, camera adjusted. Back where we need to be. Um, someday I'll be able to afford a cameraman. You know, but until YouTube picks up and the bakery picks up a little more, um, and we get some things done around the house, I really can't afford a cameraman. But probably never be able to afford a cameraman. That's all right, though. I don't mind doing it myself. That being said, we're two thirds of the way there. It looks good. It smells good. Let's taste it and see how it tastes. <laughs> mm. That is perfect. Oh. That is off the hook good. Mm, 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 mm. That crisp is just perfectly crisp. The peaches are nice and soft. Oh, it's so sweet, but not horribly sweet. That's just, oh, that's a good call. Um, this is like one of the, <laughs> this is like one of those things you didn't need. No, you even needed till you needed it till you had it. I can just feel my spirit lifting with happiness just on that first bite. This is so good. Mm. You guys have got to try this. Ooh, that was powerfully hot. Give this a try and let it cool a little longer if you do. Let me know if you do. Uh, leave me a comment down below or if there's something you do differently. You can add walnuts to this or pecans. Um, I thought about that. I like both, but then I thought, nah. Oh yeah. We'll leave it. We'll leave that out. You know, it is just a, it's an option at any rate. A lot of people do put it in there, but, uh, and maybe I'll try it again. I know I put it in my, uh, apple one and my pear crisp one. I can't believe I never did peaches, but, uh, the apple and pear crisp ones are really good. But uh, anyhow, um, let me know down in the comments down below. If you do give this a try, you won't be disappointed. That is amazing. Um, just amazing. And uh, let me know what you think. Or if you have a recipe that, you know, you want to share or talk about or tell us about or you want me to try, uh, let me know. Uh, you can even leave me a message over on Facebook or at uh, Mr. Smith's Kitchen uh, Facebook group or my homepage. It's Brian Smith. It's open to the public. Um, or, or you can message me on Messenger. Either way, any of those options are readily available. You can even message me, email me at mrsmithskitchen.com or through my website um, it is also another option. But either way, anyway, I just like talking to you guys. So uh, next week, I have no idea what we're going to do for dinner. I have no idea what we're going to do for dessert. If you have any suggestions, feel free to leave them down below in the comment. And uh, again, don't forget to like, subscribe, and share. Notification bell, all that helps. So, until next week, I love you. I love you very much. I mean that from the bottom of my heart. Tell somebody else you love them and you love them very much. They may need to hear it. It's going to make you feel good either way it goes. It's going to make you feel good. Probably both of you will smile when you tell them that. And, you know, if you make them some of this peach crisp, I guarantee they're going to smile. It's going to lead to pretty much a good cup of coffee or whatever your beverage of choice is and an evening of conversation. You know, or maybe even a Saturday, Sunday afternoon on the at the kitchen table. Who knows? But anyhow, till next week. I love you, and I'll see you then. All right? See you later. Bye-bye. Mm.